So welcome back to the Anime and Manga News for the week ending July 20th, 2012. Starting with some surprise news about the re-release of Mac- Super Dimension Fortress Macross Do You Remember Love? That's right, the classic anime film is getting a re-release on Blu-ray, and it has been revealed that the Blu-ray will have both the original and the remastered version that will include new scenes and new angles. So there actually will be this complete edition HD remaster edition, which will have shots altered as part of the retake and restoration, all being supervised by Koji Tomori, so it's all legit. But there's going to be new stuff in Viva the Love, which is odd as to why they go back and change that. But hey, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Meanwhile, Jay Manga in Manga News has announced that they will be revealing a completely new website. Now, Jay Manga basically provides licensed actual real manga for sale or rent or whatever you call it online for subscription. Anyway, you can pay for manga online through Jay Manga and it's all legit. You're going to have a completely new website which will provide readers with free, unlimited access to this manga content. It will have individual chapters of both new and old manga for free for limited time. Uh, you pay a subscription fee, and you can access the material early and get access to archives. It's kind of a web comic model where you get to some of the latest stuff, they get the first stuff free right now, then it goes into an archive, at which point you have to pay, you know, a couple of bucks a month or whatever for access to the archive. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, they, they, they will have some chapters of new series. Uh, they will also be released close to the Japanese debut, so they can get those out more quickly. And then uh, old, for older mon- uh, manga, they will release one chapter at a time. They will include Shonen, Shoujo, Yaoi, and Yuri titles, well-known and lesser-known titles, including stuff targeted for adults. So it looks like a whole range of stuff. For context, game manga is uh, 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 the front end of 39 different Japanese publishers. Kind of everyone in here. So it's certainly a pretty, pretty cool thing. So we'll see where that goes. The good news for uh, manga in general, because this means you can actually get uh, money going right back to the original creator pretty quickly. You know, there's, a, there's a relatively direct stream there, back to publishers at least. So that's a, that's a good thing. So we'll see where that goes. Meanwhile, still in manga news, uh, Tetsuhiro Otomo has announced, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Tetsuhiro Otomo, it has been announced, uh, is going to be inducted into the Eisner Award Hall of Fame. Uh, Tetsuhiro Tomo is the creator of, oh gosh, Akira, Steam Boy, Memories, and other things. And uh, so he's going to be in the Eisner Hall of Fame, which is an American award, uh, award for comic greatness. He is only the fourth Japanese inductee ever, and the first one in eight years. Not a lot of, of uh, mangaka uh, in the Eisner Hall of Fame. The others were Tezuka, Tama Tezuka, Tezuka Kote, and Goseki Kojima. Uh, the others include, you know, Will Eisner, Stan Lee, Mobius, Lindsay McKay, the, you know, ones you would probably recognize if you're familiar with the comic uh, past. So, good on Otomo for being in there. Those are certainly works that have been both uh, considered classics and also considered uh, serious works of art in their field. So, good on you there. Moving on to Dragon Ball Z news. More news on the new DVD film to be released next year. Uh, it will be set between chapters 517 and chapter 518 of the original manga. Yeah. You don't know what that is? What you, okay. So it's basically right after the Battle of Majin Buu in the Lost Decade uh, during that. Uh, Kuren, Piccolo, Vegeta, and other familiar characters will appear in the film. And it's not a spin off, it is an actual official story set in the actual timeline. So it will be canon. Ta-da. And again, Akira Toriyama is deeply involved in the screenwriting and all that sort of process. So, it's real stuff here, folks. Uh, moving on to Evan Gellion news, because Evan Gellion is supposed to die. So, if you're going to be in San Francisco in uh, August 25th to 26th, uh, either of those dates, you can be part of the Evan Gellion Real Escape Game Cross Evan Gellion Escape from an Angel game, which is a multiplayer game played in, for, in real life, so you personally show up, and you're part of this, uh, uh, not kind of other than reality, but a, a, a real reality game. The poster image describes it as follows. A secret nerd outpost is suddenly surrounded by hostiles. The operatives are trapped by these invisible angels. Suddenly, a strange melody can be heard, and a cryptic code comes through on Magi. 
as a nerve agent, you must now figure out how to escape from the mysterious place, if you can. So, it's sort of a live action, role playing puzzle game type thing. Uh, the genre is called Real Escape Games in Japan. You have to solve puzzles in these real life settings to win the game. Uh, this game uh, actually debuted in Japan last year and has been played by over 10,000 Sweaty Otaku over there. Um, so there were 800 a day during a couple of days in August. More information, head over to AnimeNewsNetwork.com. Uh, you can uh, 20 bucks against tickets, uh, 30 bucks at the door. A fair amount of money. Anyway, uh, there's no news on whether you actually get anything for winning, but I guess it's you know, fine. Meanwhile, we now have more information on the giant ray figure, which I kid you not is described as the blow up ray, uh, which is the 18 meter tall, roughly 18 yard tall ray Ayanami figure that was installed at a, uh, inside the MTV tower in Tokyo as part of an, ex uh, an expo there. It's actually not quite as creepy as it sounds. Uh, it's actually sort of uh, uh, crouched there and there's a slide next to her. So it's not like in, in, in the original image that she's laying down and kind of sliding across it. It's not that creepy. So anyway, they'll also be offering, you can also get there and buy an alien stuff while you're there. Big shock. So yes, there is actual, uh, that, that is there and it's not quite as, as, as bad. Uh, let me see if I can show up an image of this here so you guys can see it. Uh, see here, let's pull that up here real quick. So, just a quick side shot of that. Again, not too creepy. Um, it's just sort of ray there and so I can go on next to an escalator and uh, you can just kind of slide down right next to it. So, you can slide down right next to Ray's boob. Fantastic. If you're going to be in London in April, you'll be happy to know that you can check out the Princess Mononoke stage play. I'm not kidding. So basically, Studio Ghibli has announced that there's going to be a live action stage play adaptation of Princess Mononoke being put on by the Whole House Theater in London, April 2nd to April 6th. Tickets are now on sale. Uh, it has been developed uh, in cooperation with Studio Ghibli for over a year. So it's not just they decided to do this, it, they are actually working on how to do this in Studio Ghibli. Um, classic. Performances will feature giant puppets made from recycled material and original live music. Awesome. So, yeah, uh, basically a big play version. When you think about it, uh, you could pretty well reorient that considering that there's basically two sets, the forest and Iron House. So I think you can actually make that work. A couple other little odd bits of news to finish up. The Boston Convenience Store chain in Japan has announced that you'll be able to play an augmented reality, not quite a game, it'll be an augmented reality app featuring Yui from k -On. So basically you can hold your smartphone and pan it around a Boston Convenience Store and you'll see Yui standing there and you can interact with her and, and she'll say things, I guess. Um, so you'll be able to uh, touch the screen, causing her to react and speak. Hopefully it's not as creepy as that uh, massage game. Anyway, uh, it's, it's a gimmick, and it's a, it's a way of doing that. And I, I actually think it's a neat idea, because it gives you a, a chance to kind of cross the boundary between anime and real life. It's, it's a fun way of experiencing a story, you know, seeing a character around there, and mapping their personality onto the character's good. I think that would be an experiment. Finally, this is pretty cool. Uh, after you today, the astronaut, the actual astronaut, uh, who is currently uh, uh, on the International Space Station, uh, he was blasted off on a Soviet rocket earlier this week, I believe. Uh, he has, uh, there is an announcement that he's going to be recording from the ISS a part in an automatic. He will be recording a um, something for the Space Brothers anime series, and he'll be playing himself, and they're basically record this on the ISS and beam it back down to Earth for inclusion into Space Brothers. I think it's a pretty neat idea. So it'll be the world's first voice acting performance from space. So just in case you wonder where, uh, uh, where the world space programs are going, that's it, voice acting. So that's all the news for this week. Thank you. I hope to see you all next week on the Friday Go Pass. See ya.